The most amazing part of this journey is watching how far I've came. I've seen people I looked up to and I was inspired by. Icons now showing me respect. Some of the biggest legends that this culture has to offer embracing me. I credit it all to relationships. Some of these legends even became big brothers to me. I've watched some of my peers become superstars in their own right. Some of the heaviest figures in other genres have embraced me. I've been thrown into some awkward situations at times. I've always landed on my feet. But I've prided myself at being one of the personalities that's not scared to be outside. I think that's what helped my interviews. I've been able to interview some of the newest rising stars, some of the biggest artists in the game, to even the legends. The topics change, but the respect doesn't. Sometimes we watch relationships come full circle. <laughs> I've watched my relationships take me around the world. I've DJed in front of 20,000, 30,000 plus many of times. But I think that's the game changer right there. That perspective when you stand on that stage and you see those thousands of people, it gives you a new vantage point, gives you a new eye line, gives you new opinions. And with that being said, I'm here to speak them all. It's the Truth Heard Podcast. You're welcome. Punch. Uh, Truth Hurts, episode six. All right? Last one was five. I know some of y'all just getting in tune with it from last episode, though. But um, shout out to everybody who posted that shit, all the blogs, all the websites, all everything. I think we did about a quarter million views. About to, yeah, it's about to hit about a quarter million right now. I'm super, super happy. Um, I appreciate all the subscribers. I hate the cheesy YouTube shit. Subscribe now, but do whatever the fuck you want to do, man, because the content going to keep rolling out. But um, I want to get straight into it, man. I had, I man, talking to some of y'all niggas, like like getting out emotions and, and, and thoughts, if y'all don't fuck with it, some of y'all just bug the fuck out. So let's start like this. Number one, we're going to start with the shoddy phone call. Shout out to my man, Shoddy, okay? Shout out. Shoddy called me, and um, it was just dope. It's the first time I got to, well, it's like the first real time I got to get a real conversation with my boy inside. And um, a lot of people immediately that I talked to Shoddy, like, you're disloyal. You're we're going to break this down into where that this can go piece by piece. I'm going to address every single bit of clout chasing and... Stupid shit that y'all wanted. But Shadi hit me on the line, and um, we spoke on everything. I was really just trying to see how he was. And the thing that shocked me the most out of the Shadi call was Shadi literally said, uh, you know, I mean, everybody see the whole shit. Yo, he's a rat bass, all that shit. Everybody see that. But Shadi said, I forgive the kid. And I literally, even I was confused at first. I was just like, whoa. I would never in a million years think that before he's even sentenced, he's already like releasing that, I guess, negativity or that hate off his chest and be like, I forgive the kid, which was, it was mind blowing to me. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't think that, you know, that would have happened so soon. So, um, shout out to Shadi on that. Like, that was just, um, that was pretty, it was shocking to me. And, you know, we spoke on everything, spoke about how um, he's doing in jail, uh, how they just holding their head. Uh, obviously, he took his guilty plea, um, and a couple others took their guilty plea. Um, Crippy did as well. Uh, shout out to Crippy. You know, I don't think that um, because it's a clout game. So they just say 6 9 and shot his name over and over like it's two people in jail. But this other nigga's in jail. You know, shout out to Crippy. Crippy was uh, a lit nigga. You get what I'm saying? Um Hope everything works out for him, but I know he took his guilty shit too. I don't know if his sentence went through yet, but shout out to him. Um, when you look at this whole scenario, you stand back and you start to listen to the wording and things where Shadi's just like, yo, I just don't want you to forget me. Yo, put out the content. I don't want them to, I don't want them to think Treyway stops. Like he still I got a positive outlook on everything, even though what's going on. And, you know, they getting railroaded. They all got offered 40, 50 years, and now they gotta take their guilty pleas. Or they got to fight the feds, which we all know how the percentages work on that. So it's depressing to kind of go through it and hear my boy. You know, I let him know I missed him. I let him know a lot of people showing love to him. But a lot of people confuse me on this point, where a lot of people brought up uh, loyalty um, to Takashi because I spoke to Shadi. Let me just let me just 
let y'all be clear of something. Y'all loved the entire Treyway and y'all loved Shadi until the Breakfast Club interview that he did literally four days before he went to jail. So everybody was loved. We was in LA literally a week before the Breakfast Club interview. So before the Breakfast Club interview and the whole video where I'm firing everybody came out, y'all loved everyone. So all of this, yo, niggas has been snaking and all that shit is bullshit. Like y'all just got to stop repeating everything that y'all see on the internet as if it's truth or as if you know some type of fact. You just got to get past it. A lot of people just continue to do this and I want to tap on some comments. I'm going to like answer directly to some comments because some of the shit that y'all wrote was just ridiculous. But let's just talk about this loyalty thing for a moment. When you're in the street and we went over the snitching definition and you're in the street and you decide it is clear as hell, I'm not even going to go over it no more. But when you're in the street and you say that you're in the street, snitching is not allowed because you agree to the street rules. Now, street rules do not have moments to where that you can sway on it. Like, yeah, bro. Yeah, that nigga, I don't fuck with him or he stole from me. That's not how the streets work, dickheads. Like, y'all just not understanding. The streets are simple. You agree to rules, and those rules go by even if it's your enemy. Like, it can be your enemy. The whole point of the street rules is so that you can get your own revenge, if any, if you felt like something went wrong. All right? Let's grasp that. We grasp that. Simple. Now we move forward. A lot of people started questioning loyalty on what they feel like uh, I should do or what they feel like I can speak on or what they don't. Y'all don't understand anything. I can speak on anything I want as long as it's true to myself. You get what I mean? So I was on live and I spoke about it and I said straight up and down, free Takashi 69 free him. Whether he snitches or not, I don't want jail for anyone. But I just made it clear on something about how I just didn't want to rock with it. And a lot of people continue to say, yo, it's clout chasing you, clout chasing. I just want to remind y'all, clout chasing, by definition, would assume to be a move or a play that you're doing just to get views, loves, and likes by using someone's fame to your advantage. I think that's a pretty good definition. If I wanted to use Takashi's fame to an advantage, me knowing that he was cooperating, me knowing that he's going to get out of jail before everyone, I would have stayed quiet so that I could get around him when he comes and continue to be his DJ. Because me and Takashi left on good terms. Y'all grasped that, right? I would still be his DJ if I didn't speak. Y'all understand? Because I was before he went in. Me and him spoke. After the breakfast club, everything. We spoke. Okay. Y'all get that. Because y'all keep, yeah, bro, you going. That was my choice. All right? I know some of y'all are very confused. But the reason why I stepped away and the reason why I spoke out is because I don't stand by people who double dutch on their realities. I don't fuck with it. I'm a man first, integrity first, honor first. So what you do is what you show me. You give me your word, I take it as such. You get me? I'm a handshake kind of guy. We don't even do contracts on a lot of shit that I've done because we a handshake guy. And I don't even get burned in business because when you an A1 guy, A1 business comes your way. I digress. A lot of people think that um, the shoddy play was like, yo, you got shiny phone, yeah, he's a cloud chaser, look at that. Let's be clear. A lot of people want to know why the Shoddy interview came down. Like right here, I'll probably post it and see how much views that Shoddy interview did. I think it did about 150, 175, somewhere, somewhere 1,000 views, and it was only up for two hours. I got a call from his lawyer. I got a call from his family. I got a call from another one of his family. And they were like, the lawyer feels like they don't want the content up because they don't want things to be misperceived certain ways. Although he says, I forgive Takashi, I forgive 6 9 and I felt like Shadi felt like that was a good thing to put out. You get what I'm saying? The lawyer and the legal team didn't feel like the rest of the content needed to be out. Okay? So if everybody thinking that we were clout chasing, it did 160,000 views in two hours. It was going to hit a million. Again, if we were clout chasing, why would you take the interview off the internet? No one's going to have that answer because it's clear as day. I would have wanted two three, four, five million views. But if my man's team goes, yo, I don't know if that's going to help or hurt, I'm not even going to think twice. Video on private, take it off the gram, took all my posts down. I hit up all of the pages who posted it, who was being cooperative and being like, yo, can you take that off? And most of the people took it off, shot the rap catch up, shot the rap. Um, 
and uh, maybe a couple. I'm not sure, whatever. I, I, a bunch of people. I hit up mad people, but I took it down. So again, for the people who think that everything is done for clout, that's a moment to where it's reminded that this isn't a clout move. Um, what else we want to? I, I, I want to because I, I just want to get certain things in play. A lot of y'all continue to think that because I was with Six Nine. Now let me just clear something up. I'm a brand. I'm a DJ, right? Um, a lot of people was calling me like the next young DJ Khaled of New York. Why? Not of any other reason other than I loudly promote and support talent that I believe in from my city. All right? Simple. I loudly promote and support the talent from my city. I have. A lot of people go, yo, what is... like?" You can literally go down my Instagram. I don't delete shit. I don't post memes. I don't post something. Go down in the gram. You will see me standing next to artists in their early stages constantly from the city. One of the first people to stand by Cardi B. Obviously, Young and May. First people, one of the first to stand by Fresher. One of the first to stand by Cat. One of the first to stand by... I mean, it goes on and on and on. You get what I'm saying? Jeezy Moolah. And then obviously, 6 9 Like, I've stood next to a lot of people early. A lot. And there's way more. I'm just talking about the people that have crossed over the hump for now. Simple. Um, that's what I do. So when everybody be like, yo, you used to dick ride 6 9 In fact, let's talk about that. This dick riding shit. It is impossible, okay? Let's talk about it. It is impossible to dick ride your friends. If they're your friends... You're supposed to be loud and excessively supportive of your friends. It's impossible. How can you be like, yo, I'm dick riding my mans. I want y'all to think that my mans is the greatest at everything he does so that y'all fuck with him. Buy his product, fuck with him, do anything. If my man sell fucking clothes, nigga, my man got the best clothes out. I'm dick riding my mans. Nigga, y'all don't understand what this shit is. Dick riding is when you don't know someone and you're blindly supporting them. If you know them, that's not dick riding. That's support. Y'all don't understand shit. Y'all can't. It's impot. Like this is the this is the problem why most artists and brands and creators. I need y'all to repost this. Y'all don't understand. The reason why most brands, creators, and artists and everybody don't pop is because their friends are so fucking focused on not dick riding that they don't help. You literally will be like, nah, I can't, yo, bro. It's gonna look like I'm dick riding. You just want me to keep posting you. In fact, yes, nigga, because you're my friend. You're supposed to do it. So for everyone who thinks I was dick riding any artist I was around, I was supporting my friend. Almost every single artist I fucked with has been in my crib, has been around my team, has been around my family, have been around shit. So they become my family when we're working together. And when all that shit goes down, I support and I'll continue to support. Y'all just want to trick everybody. Yo, don't dick ride, dick ride, dick ride. Shut the fuck up. Like, you niggas don't know shit. Y'all just such haters and so mad. Yo, most of the people that I look at that be like, I'm dick riding, have their own mans that have their own artists or some brand that they eventually DM me and I didn't respond for whatever reason and then I'm a dick rider because I'm supporting someone else. There's a dick rider on YouTube who continues to make videos about me, dick rider, and I never answer him because he's dick riding me because I don't know him. But yet more and more and more videos with me, more and more and more product bird ass. Back to the point. When we talking about what goes forward and how do we do things and why we do things, it's because we care about it. And I care about a lot of these artist projects. So when I was around Takashi and we started building, I cared about him getting bigger. Yes, as a DJ. Yes, I was making a business move by being around a successful talent that I believed can actually win. As a DJ, I don't be around talents that I don't think will win. Shoot me. I have to think. When people send me their music, I listen, and I go, oh, I'm not feeling it. I don't then go, yeah, bro, let me be your DJ. That doesn't make sense for life, and it doesn't make business sense. So when I hear an artist, and I like their music, and I then go, yo, bro, let's work, and then I feel them out, I see how they record, I see how they post, I watch their team, then as a business move, I'd be like, yo, let's start working more together. And the artist, as their business move goes, every time Punch stands by someone in New York, eventually it becomes successful. And my resume has proven that. That's not even up for, it's not even up for argument anymore. 
It's literally not. Almost every single artist that I've publicly stood by at one point or another had their moment in this city. If Jeezy wasn't in jail, Jeezy had deals on the table. Be clear. You're not understanding what goes on. M.A., when everybody was like, yo, bro, you just fucking with a dyke. And I'm like, yo, she's a full-fledged artist. Watch your mouth. She goes, becomes successful. We tour the country. Boom. Designer. Early. Y'all think, I'm not even going back and forth. It's simple as fuck. I know what I'm doing. And that's why I continue to make money in this business. And the haters and the uneducated continue to speak about things that they're unaware of. So when people go and they poke at things, just sometimes think about why they're saying it. Let's get back to the point to where we're talking about loyalty to Takashi. Cool. A lot of people feel like I shouldn't talk about anything because I made money with him. Now, as I've then told you, while we were around, it was a business relationship that then turned to a friendship and a family aspect when you're around for a long period of time. Why? It's because we're around every fucking day, traveling the world, doing all of this shit, doing it, and then you start building a bond with people. I don't know how you niggas operate, but that's how I felt like the world is. You around a nigga for two days, you're cool. You around a nigga for two months, you're cooler. You are around for 10 months, you're real cool. It's just simple shit. I, I, I continue to go back. Me and him made money. Takashi never gave me a dollar in his life. He's never given me a dollar. Every time I've broke bread, it was a service. So I get paid. We're partners, okay? I didn't work for him. He didn't work for me. When we do a show, I'm on that stage before him. I earn my bread. Then we perform. We do it. We get off. We get paid, okay? There's a service. It was a business. Y'all continue to think that someone's giving people money. Again, to the amazing people that felt like Takashi like came and saved me and found me. I was 20 million views in of video content with This Is 50 way before I ever knew what a Takashi 69 was to remind niggas. Full-fledged, full contract with This Is 50, killing, knocking interviews out, viral park, been happening. So for the people, again, they'd be like, I didn't know you since Takashi. That's cool, bro. That's not a diss to me. I don't think the whole entire world met me the same day I put out my first piece of content. It's a journey in this. So whenever you came, I appreciate you. Whether you came because you saw a porn star, your girlfriend liked my shit, Takashi post me, or fucking anyone else, or miraculously Instagram pop me up on your feed. I appreciate your dickhead ass for coming, but every time you remind me, yo, I didn't know about you before this, I don't give a fuck. The whole purpose of this is so that you can know me. And y'all niggas know my face already. So I've achieved what my purpose was. It was to get seen by you niggas. I just want to just, again, continue this process so that y'all can understand what we're doing. I want to address niggas. But we're going to address some of the comments that I've seen. And I just want to talk because a lot of people feel like, you know, there's a lot of comments. So... 69 HQ, good interview, but the fans still rocking with Takashi regardless. So great. I, that's all cool. I'm never mad. No, I'm never I'm never mad at anything that's going on. So if they weren't loyal to him, why would he be loyal back? Okay, cool. Now, a lot of people continue to think that this snitching thing or cooperating thing is about loyalty. You don't not snitch or you do snitch because they're an enemy or your friend. You don't snitch because that's a code in your heart. Okay? Y'all grasp that. It's not about who you're snitching on. Okay, because you shouldn't snitch on a nigga that you don't know. You should not snitch at all if you are agreeing to play in the streets. Simple shit. That's nothing to do about anything. And I want to also add this one thing. If y'all continue to say that niggas are going to kill him and niggas fuck his girl and they stole money, I'm going to then for one moment say okay to everything. Who fucked this girl? Let's say that's one person. Who was going to kill him? That's another person. And who stole his money? Let's say it's one of them niggas again, because y'all say Shadi did everything. Cool, right? There's eight niggas, nine niggas in jail right now, dickheads. What happens to the other six or seven? Fuck did they do to him? Fuck did they do to him? I, I wish I could hear some of you dickhead niggas back. What did ev So every single one of them niggas did something to him? If y'all niggas hate so much and y'all hate Shadi so much, cool. Then six, he's cooperating against the entire indictment. Bozos, swear to God. Yo, why are you speaking on honor and code? Why don't you talk about them kidnapping and robbing him? Ay, ay. It's nothing to talk about. If niggas did something to him, cool. When you are in the street, if something happens, if I'm in the street and a nigga duff me and I'm playing by street rules... 
My job is not to go and cooperate and tell the police. I need to go and wait and go deal with that nigga on my own. That is street rules. That's by D. Cook. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Kale So, if somebody fucked my girlfriend, robbed me, planned to kill me. These are likes that, these are just comments that just had so many like comments under it. Would you sit in jail for something like that? Um, you know what I mean? Would you throw your life away for some bums to eat jail food every single day? All right, cool. Again, let's just get this clear because I feel like every topic that we were screenshotting is redundant. Yo, bro, no one's doing jail time for someone. He's not doing jail time for crimes or shit that they say he's not. He's admitting in himself that he was at shit and doing shit as well. But he's also pulling niggas down and co-signing it. So he's not doing going to jail for crimes like I'm in jail. Jimmy robbed it, but I'm going to do Jimmy's time. No, I can't do that. No, that's not what happened. I need to learn how to read paperwork. You get what I'm saying? And this was one point that I thought was pretty lit. Um... This is a sad situation. If 6 9 would have listened to the people that were trying to lead him in the right direction, he would still be out here doing sold-out shows. That's B. Mendez. I agree. A lot of people told him. Everybody. I've told him. Angie, Fat Joe, <clears throat> 100 niggas that we meet. Everyone was like, yo, bro, chill. Focus on the music. Stop doing the extra shit. You're the biggest artist in the world right now. Let's focus on the positive. I do believe... <laughs> That if he would have just slowed down and chilled, that we'd still be getting money and still be out here killing and beating up the streets and being the biggest act in the world. I do believe that. My man, Bleezy D.O.D., shout out Bleezy. He said, we still in the streets. Talking is not an option. Talking or writing is not an option. It's really simple, bro. At the end of the day, if you're playing by these street rules, you're outside. So there's different codes of conduct. And then... um. <clears throat> We got, you know, it's just a lot of people saying the same shit. I feel like it's annoying. Um, <clears throat> oh, my man Haiti said, yo, niggas lit. I said, just be scamming the streets just to come up and fold when shit gets hot. Basically, a lot of you niggas will do shit to get really popping and get all the attention of everything that you want. You got it. Everybody moving. And now when the shit comes down on you, everybody's like, yo, bro, chill. I was just doing it for this. The clout, the attention. It don't work like that. Hopefully y'all understand everything and y'all stop being so annoying and harassing. If you still support the kid, cool, 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 cool. If y'all thought I was doing this for clout, I wouldn't have spoke. It wouldn't make sense. I was already around the money. You get what I'm saying? It's just simple shit. And then, you know what I mean? Like um, another thing I want to tap on, and I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but on the shoddy call, one of the dopest things on that call, you know, Shadi said some shit that I thought was the illest shit. Um, free Hav also inside. Shadi and Hav not getting along, he said. I mean, a lot of people heard about this. But Shadi literally said, me and my man that used to be my best friend is not getting along. And I still wish him out. And I still wish that everybody was free. And I got to understand that. So that is two people that's not seeing right. They're not on the same wave. They borderline enemies almost. And that man's still saying free him. That man is still saying, so you just got to understand the difference of certain street niggas and certain niggas that are outside and understand the difference of somebody else who's not wanting to play by the rules anymore and not wanting to live by the shit that they agreed to and then being like, well, look, man, it's better for him to be in jail and him to be in jail, but not me. I just want you to think of that. You know what I mean? But again... Free 6 9 free the whole gang, free the whole Treyway, free every single person in there, free everyone. You get what I'm saying? Like, free it all. It's just tough where, you know, there's people outside and then they got Kuda B snatched up and all of this. That shit was rough and it's just, it's rough. You get what I'm saying? Kuda out here putting out his own music, doing his own thing, trying to just get his whole professional shit moving and then he gets snatched up in this because a lot of alleges and talkings and people putting, it's, it's terrible, my nigga. Like, this type of shit is sickening. But, you know, off all of that, um, I just wanted to cover it. You know what I mean? It was tough because I delayed a lot of, to doing a lot of this because I was like, I wanted to um, give some time. You know, I was in L.A. Uh, for about two weeks. And uh, while I was out there, um, the sad moment of Nipsey getting killed happened. And just being in L.A. was a totally different feel when this happened. Like... It's difficult to even put myself back into it. And 
if y'all saw the first Truth Hurts, you see at the beginning of my intro, I have all of these uh, clips and montages of moments of success that I consider in my career to be dope-ass moments. And I've met everybody. I've been around everyone. I have footage of everything. But I made sure to put the Nipsey Hustle clip in there when Nipsey was outside in Brooklyn because Nipsey is my friend and um, I fuck with Nip. And we've had tons of conversations and he's always been A1, A1. And it's there. So before everybody, again, because your favorite thing is clout chasing, this, that, look at the episode, look at the date, it happened before it, go look at this same YouTube channel, go back and you'll see Nipsey Hustle outside in Brooklyn on Sally's in Brownsville um, with the rest of the Rollins and neighborhood was out there, GSC, it just had a lot of, of the Lokes and the Cuz, just everybody together, everybody just performing and behaving cool and that day was amazing. And I've been in with Nip again. We've had Nip in Brooklyn another time. Then there was the time when Nip came to Brooklyn and was in Lust with me, Fresher, um, and Fetty. As soon as Fetty came home, GS9 Fetty. And we was just all talking. And we was talking to Fetty. I mean, um, Nipsey for hours that day. And, you know, Nipsey gave me so much props that day. And there's a lot of moments pop out where Nipsey was just like, yo, you the voice of everything new in New York. I wish we had more voices for people to co-sign artists like that on the West. You know, I got those videos, too, for the people again. I hate that I got to like, clarify everything. But for my fans and my supporters and people who just understand we on some A1 shit right now, I appreciate y'all. But I got that footage. Um, it was amazing. But I felt funny to just keep posting because uh, so many haters I have under my comment section right now, it was just frustrating for me to put out some with Nip and be like, yo, that's my nigga. And A1 and... And people are like, yeah, you posting this for clout. And I'm just like, yo, y'all are so signal. Everybody thinks everything is for clout. Like, why is it concern everyone so much about how people mourn? And I just pulled it down. Like, I had way more. I got way more pictures, way more videos. And I just, I actually, y'all won that war. So if the clout chasers and the haters wanted to win, y'all won that war. And I stopped posting Nip because it just felt like every time I posted them, someone was saying something negative. And it's not about me, bro. I just wanted to just you know, show those moments of where he said, like, really, you know, his word prolific and futuristic and uh, just wise, amazing moments. And it was just tough to just know that we've had those moments and and now that man's not here, you know. And I think that the toughest part about that, I got on the phone with Fresher um, about 30 minutes after they shot Nipsey. And... Um, the conversation with Fresher was more about like a paranoia or a fear to where it's like if Nip could get hit in front of his store in his neighborhood, not no pun intended, but who is to say any of us are comfortable anywhere? Like Nip's respect. I mean, y'all have all seen him destroy the timelines in the last two weeks. I mean, everyone, every NBA player, every NFL player, every actor, politicians, nigga, Obama. I mean, it's endless. Everyone has literally stood tall for Nip. And if he wasn't comfortable in his own neighborhood, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, he was comfortable, but if you can't be safe, in your own, you know what I mean? Like, it's disheartening on so many levels. That shit was just hard to just deal with mentally because it's like, that's the stand-up nigga that's putting back into town and they still hit him. So me and Fresh I had this whole conversation about that. Cause you know, locally, locally I got rappers this and me, I got niggas in the comments, I got all of that, and it kind of just fucks with your brain a bit to be like, how much hate do y'all niggas really possess that y'all feel like taking a nigga life that's doing so much for the town and doing so much is the option or the move. So it's just something to think about, you know, like uh, you know, rest in peace, Nipsey, on every single level. Um I'll post it off on my own time because everybody mourns different, you know. I just wasn't in the game of trying to out-mourn someone to be like, yo, that's my friend, though. Like, you like them, but I know him. Like, that's my man's. And I just felt like a lot of that was happening. And again, that would be me being hypocritical if I then commented or, or judged them. So I was letting everybody just do their own thing in their own way. For the artists that didn't speak up, they could have just been in their crib crying. Like, we just can't be so judgmental or so uh, presumptuous to an extent to just feel like we 
should make people do things the way that we want them to do it. Everybody just got to mourn and react the way that they decide to mourn and react to things. So uh, all in all, Sam, hold your head, and Lauren, hold your head, and I don't know his kids' names, but his family and everything, but definitely, like, Sam, like, you know, stand-up guy, too, you know what I mean? Like, his brother is different, you know, even when you listen to him talk. It's just tough. It's a whole thing to kind of digest and really be like, uh, you know, hard to hear, hard to hear. Rest in peace and blessings to the family. But listen, on lighter notes, a lot of people want to know what's going on with me and 50. Um, shout out to 50 Sands, my big bro. Um, he helped me on a lot of different ways and helped me get to where um, I needed sometimes with ideas and visions. And we've spoke a thousand times. And we've argued 10,000 times. Most of the time we speak and we argue him because I feel some and he just don't. Or he feel like I'm co-signing some new shit and he don't get it yet. And then six months later, 50 get it. So, you know what I mean? I miss the big bro. I miss the whole staff up at G-Unit. But I decided not to go back this year um, just for business reasons and creative reasons. I feel like I did so much on This Is 50. You know, we've acquired almost 30 some million views, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagram. Uh, YouTube, it's so many millions and millions and millions of views on interviews and content and impressions and all of that, that it's like, what else is there to do on that brand? Um, I feel like every single time I did an interview that did a million views, um, someone was there saying, yeah, I mean, he got a million views, but it's because of 50 Cent. It's because it's, this is 50. And um, I just feel like I'm at a point in my career where I just want to just acquire, if I get 50,000 views, I want those 50,000 views to be my 50,000 views, and nobody can say he got 50,000 views because of this. I want that to be mine. That quarter million on True First episode before, that's mine. You get what I'm saying? So I'd rather do a quarter million that's mine than do a million on another platform, and then y'all can tell me that it's not because of me, even though that is my shit. But, you know. Um, that's why. So shout out to the whole This Is 50 staff. Um, I might be going back up there for like spot moments or, you know, we might renegotiate a big contract and make it work. Who the fuck knows? But right now it's all about the home team network, the whole AC network, everything that's going on in this channel with, uh, everything that's moving. That's everything that's going on. Um, another thing, uh, spoke to Bobby again and, um, the number one shit that, that, that I think Bobby just wanted to get out to everybody is he's coming home with so much energy and so much like like feel and, and, and smoke that he just he excited as fuck, you know. Um he one thing that he did that was unique and rowdy too, they didn't really release a lot of their music. Well, Rowdy put out a whole tape at the beginning, but there's Bobby records that never came out, and I just feel like he just didn't want the old sound to define kind of what was going on. But I hear that they got something bubbling, like one that might leak out with a really big feature. But, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You get what I'm saying? It's a big deal. Uh, the number one shit I want to talk about, too, is this. A lot of celebrities. I got into it one of these rappers. I'm not going to say who because that would be clout chasing in a lot of y'all whole category. But I got into it with this rapper the other day. And... Um, it just was corny because I kind of like pressed him about the way that he be behaving and he just does a lot of shit for attention. And, uh, you know, probably like two days later, Safari came to my crib and we was just chilling and we were talking and um, we were just in Brooklyn, just bullshitting, went to go get food and we were talking about so much shit and I also did the Safari interview later that night, go check it out. But the thing, uh, the, the most important part of that convo that came up to me is, is celebrities that only act like they only, they're too cool to fuck with people. I'm down to earth. A lot of y'all see me in the street. I'm, I'm A1, show love, take pictures, uh, co-sign. Trust me, if I even got time, I'm giving y'all niggas advice or perspective on whatever y'all doing. But the thing that I hate about celebrities that are, you know, are, are really dick riding because, and, and this is, I hate this word, but they're really doing it. They'll be a whole famous nigga, right? They got a thousand comments, right? Every post they put up, a thousand plus comments. Everybody, I love you. I love you. You amazing. You fire. Yo, you dope. Yo, I love your new song. I love your mixtape. All of that. The, 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 the rap nigga, he sees it. He feeling good, right? He ignores everyone in his comments. But y'all keep writing him. And keep writing her. It could be a her too. You get what I'm saying? Like, Because there's some women artists that do it too. They get lost in their fame, and then the fans continue to support them throughout this whole process. Cool. 
But that same artist whose phone is broke every single time y'all niggas send them love and y'all write them something will end up under the trendy artist. They under Yellow Beezy shit. They under Moneybag Yo. They under YG. They under Blueface. They under all of the popping niggas. Yo, what's up, bro? I see you. And they making jokes and they LOLing. And I just think that it's corny to only acknowledge other lit niggas. I just think it's sucker shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, my DMs be active, and I'm trying to just keep my DMs for the fans, for the famous, and for the flirting. I'm just being honest. My emails, I'm getting better and better at responding. I got my business emails if y'all got money, or y'all want to do bookings, and if y'all want to send music, or the artists, I got it up there. I got my social media. It's like I'm literally getting better at combing through shit so that people aren't sending me music to my DM because I won't listen to it. I just block it because I've given directions on how to send me music. The email is in my Instagram bio. And it's right there for y'all to send me music. And that's how I listen to it. I listen to it every day. I listen to the, I get almost like anywhere between like 80 and 90 different artist submissions every day. So that's almost what, four or 500 a week. You get what I'm saying? Like it's a lot, but I'm listening to every single song and then I'm watching <clears throat> and I'm going to their Instagrams and I'm seeing it. But artists just got to do better and fans y'all got to do better. Y'all got to expect more from these fans, from these artists who are just ignoring everything that y'all are doing just so that they can get enough clout to then just dick ride another rapper and act like y'all aren't there. Y'all got to start holding these artists to a stronger bit of accountability. And for a lot of you entrepreneurs that want to get shit started, make sure that you're thinking about shit before you approach someone. A lot of people are coming up to me like, yo, bro, I got songs, I ain't put it out. Yo, bro, I got a label, we ain't launch it. Yo, bro, I got a mixtape, I ain't drop it. Just understand, I know opportunity is opportunity, but make sure that when you're taking your shot, that it actually makes sense for something that you're doing. Make sure that you're ready, because if you might catch someone's attention, and then now I listen, and then I like one of your songs, and you don't got no other songs, and now you feel like you weren't ready, you missed that opportunity. I'm not the end-all, be-all, but I'm going to say that for anybody else that, 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 that holds any type of gatekeeper-like weight or status in this game. You get what I'm saying? Um... I ain't going to hold y'all too long today. It's just a lot of shit going on. Another thing I want y'all to check out is all of the content I got so y'all can understand what this whole home team network shit is. I want to be a competitor. I want to compete with the biggest brands out. I want to have content. I'm going to roll it out. I got five main pieces of content that I'm rolling out. I got this. This is the, the True First podcast. I got the turntable, which I'm going to be rolling out soon. Not sure if I put it out before this came out or not, so y'all can understand it. But it's this DJ podcast I got where DJs is going to be talking about music, and I'm going to be pulling in all of the big DJs from around the world, all of the tour DJs for the biggest artists, and we're just talking for them, talking about music. Then I have the Homebody podcast, which is with Chanel Hart, the famous, the beautiful, the bad, the gorgeous porn star. You get what I'm saying? She's lit, man. One of the biggest black porn stars in the whole world. She's fire. They just deleted her page. Go follow her. Um, go look at the Homebody Podcast. We're just talking about all the shits. Watch it with your girl. Laugh, chill. It's some fire, funny shit. It's amazing. And then I got um, Moving, which I just opened up with D-Boy Low. I got some big artists coming up next. I don't want to announce it until I just roll it out. I got two or three interviews already done in the stash. It's dope. And then I got the Domino Effect, which is just for my really, really big you know, like really huge stars. And I want that to be really broad, not particularly just music to where I'm just sitting there in detail and just speaking to artists on more personal and real life moments versus just the headlines and the cloud chasing moments and just talking about the music and shit. It's more about life. So those are just the content pieces I'm rolling out on this channel. And then I'm going to be putting out shit randomly here and there between it. So if you got content that you want on the page and you want all that, hit up the email on my Instagram with the business and we'll talk about it and we'll figure out if we want to host your content and move forward or post your podcast and we'll just talk some business and make it work. You know, we got the subscribers up. We jumped up from maybe like 10K. I think we got like 20K subscribers now. So we're going to just boom this up and just continue doing what the fuck we do on Instagram or all that. If you fuck with this, repost it. If you fuck with it, drop a comment. I'm answering. I'm trying my best to reply to everybody that's coming with some love or some sense um, to just keep this interaction moving. You get what I'm saying? But it's lit, man. It's the Truth Hurts podcast. I hate if I said something that pissed you off, I apologize. It's the truth, though. I'm not really giving, I'm trying not to do things like, and I feel, and I feel, and I think I try to do things that I know, and I try to say shit that I know so that we can get past this and we can stay about the truth. The Truth Hurts podcast, episode six. Yeah, man. It's the podcast, nigga. You're welcome. Wow.